Our world has problems. Poverty, famine, debt, war, disease, unemployment. Throughout our world, 925 million people don't have enough to eat. 443 million school days are lost each year due to water-related disease. One and a half billion people don't have electricity, and the Arab Spring have flourished as a reaction to corruption and injustice. While the U.S. may show some signs of economic recovery, look elsewhere to countries like Spain, and you'll find a staggering unemployment rate of nearly 25 percent. These facts and figures are disturbing. They can keep us up at night, but don't lose hope. Because what if I told you that we can solve these global grand challenges, create radical breakthroughs for the benefit of humanity, make the impossible possible? My name is Gian Alves, and I work with the X Prize Foundation to do exactly that: to create radical breakthroughs for the benefit of humanity, to make the impossible possible. I don't do this with my crystal ball or with the principles of economic forecasting. But I predict the future by creating it through, through the design of prize competitions. So let's take a look at X Prize's story, how it got started, what we're doing today, and where we're going in the future. If we look back to the Ortega Prize, which was launched in 1919, we can better understand the inspiration for the X Prize Foundation and the incentive prize model. Hotel magnate Raymond Ortega launched the Ortega Prize in 1919. Because he wanted to get the world excited about aviation, so he put up this twenty-five thousand dollar purse for the first team or individual to cross the Atlantic. To cross, to cross the Atlantic, nonstop from New York to Paris. The winner wasn't a famous air pilot. Instead, it was twenty-five-year-old underdog Charles Lindbergh. Who flew his Spirit of St. Louis nonstop across the Atlantic? Lindbergh was in the company of eight other competitors who raised a cumulative $400,000 to win a $25,000 purse. We can see the exponential impact of the Ortega Prize and of Lindbergh's flight on today's commercial aviation industry, which is now worth over $300 billion. If you're already familiar with the X Prize Foundation, you likely know about the Ansari X Prize, which was awarded back in 2004. Our founder, Peter Diamandis, wanted to go to space himself and make it accessible and easier for anyone to get there. So he put up the $10 million Ansari X Prize so that he could make that possible, so that anyone can get to space more easily. And he wanted to take space travel out of the sole hands of the government. So what he did with this competition. Is he asked that teams from around the world build a private spacecraft, fly it to 100 kilometers suborbital, and do that mission twice in two weeks while three passengers were on board? Actually, the prize was originally designed for 100 miles, but we changed it to kilometers because miles was too difficult. But Peter jokes that Americans wouldn't know the difference anyway, so it was actually no big deal. The competition managed to attract 25, 26 teams from seven nations, and these teams spent a cumulative of over 100 million dollars to win a 10 million dollar purse. The winning team alone, that flew in Spaceship One, actually spent 26 million dollars to win a 10 million dollar prize. So you can see that there's a leverage model built into our competitions, and the potential for opening up an entirely new industry. In this case, in this case, commercial spaceflight. And here, come full circle, Spaceship One is now hanging next to the Spirit of St. Louis in the Smithsonian, Washington, D.C. So our story has a happy beginning. Today, X Prize is more than just space. We actually operate and design prize competitions across four verticals: education and global development, exploration both of space and deep oceans, energy environment, and life sciences. I'd like, to, I'd like to talk about this prize in particular right now, so that you can better understand the range of competitors that our competitions attract. 
We actually awarded this prize, the Wendy Schmidt Oil Cleanup X Challenge. I know, it's a mouthful. Uh, it's a, it was a $1.4 million competition, which we awarded this past fall. After the BP oil spill occurred, we, we realized that X Prize, we had to do something. So we designed this competition as a reaction to the oil, oil, oil spill, and we challenged teams from around the world to increase the oil recovery rate two times more than the industry standard. We received 350 submissions, and the winning team not only doubled the oil recovery rate, but actually quadrupled it. Interesting side note about the range of diverse competitors that we attract. One of the finalist teams in that competition was actually started in a tattoo parlor in Las Vegas. So what started as a tattoo consultation actually resulted in a full-blown oil cleanup technology. And uh, when one of the teams, when one of the team members on that same team was asked, how long have you been in the oil industry? He responded, counting today? <laughs> so you can see, again, our prizes attract a range of competitors with a range of experiences and expertise, in this case, in the uh, tattoo industry. So now let's talk about what the X Prize is up to today. We have our $30 million Google Lunar X Prize, in which we're asking teams from around the world to privately build rovers, send them to the moon, travel 500 kilometers, and transmit data and images back to Earth. We have our Archon Genomics X Prize. This is a $10 million competition where we're asking teams from around the world to sequence the DNA of 100 centenarians in 30 days at $1,000 or less per human genome. And if you actually go on our Archon Genomics website, you can actually check out some of the interviews with our centenarians. Here to the, to the left, we have Bessie Cooper at 115 years old. She's our oldest centenarian. And Bessie shares with us that the innovation had, that had the most impact on her life was the television, because it allowed her to keep up with world news. 102-year-old Saul Belson uh, tells us of a memorable moment that he had at a, at a museum in Chicago. Saul actually ran into Albert Einstein, of all people, and he shares with us that he actually approached Albert by name and asked him, how is it that the world and the atmosphere have always been here? Saul tells us that Albert responded, you know, I don't know, but I guess we'll just have to accept it until someone proves otherwise. <laughs> and then we have Alice Myers, at also 102 years old, and she advises young students to stay in school and to get an education, and to stay out of trouble, because it's a lot easier to get into trouble than it is to get out of it. <laughs> then we also have our Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize of $10 million. We actually recently launched this competition uh, this past January, we're asking teams from around the world to integrate a range of technologies onto a consumer's mobile device to accurately diagnose a set of diseases independent of a healthcare professional. So, well, and also while providing the best consumer experience. So it has to be fun and engaging to use as well. So you can imagine the kind of impact this might have on, on you as an individual in terms of taking care of your own health and the impacts that it could have for this country and abroad as well. So before I talk about what comes next for XPRIZE, I want to talk about what comes next, or what's, what's happening now in prize design. And I want to refer back to a comment that I made earlier about how prize designers were challenged with predicting the future. So how do we do this? Well, first we start by identifying a global grand challenge, a market failure, an industry that is stuck. That is stuck. And we use a process of primary and secondary research and a constant refinement of our prize concepts. It, I'll be the first to admit, it, it's not an easy process. It requires a lot of patience, a lot of diligence, curiosity, and a willingness to throw away any preconceived notions that you have about the topic at hand. Um, as part of our prize design process, we also do what's a, a really fun part of a prize design process. It's called visioneering. And this is basically an, an all-immersive kind of all-hands-on-deck workshop experience where we bring experts and thought leaders from around the world to identify global grand challenges and design competitions around them. And actually, a few weeks ago, right here in Los Angeles, we had uh, our annual major visioneering event. We had a range of, our, of participants join us for this experience. To the left, we have Paul Allen of Microsoft, 
who actually backed Spaceship One from the Ansari X Prize. Uh, Quincy Jones was there, which was really cool. Uh, and if you ever watched The Office, uh, Rain Wilson, AKA Dwight Trout, also joined us. And he actually developed a really cool prize. It was called Motion of the Ocean. It was a desalination competition. And when Rain actually got up on stage, he had this whole pitch. He convinced his team to also do this hip gyrating dance. And it was, it was just the, one of the best pitches I've ever seen for a prize concept. Um, so it was really quite fun to watch. The top prize competition that came out of that visioneering, visioneering event was actually called the Edufone competition. This was proposed by Activision's Eric Hirschberg. And what Eric proposed is that students gain access to their mobile phones through their educational accomplishments. And education is not, wasn't just a big theme at this year's Visioneering event. It also continues to be a major theme in all of our prize design work. We're actually looking into competitions that incorporate education and specifically looking at games and how they can be uh, compelling, effective, and, and viral. So now let's talk about what's next for the foundation, what's next for XPRIZE, some of the prizes we're working on for the future. We have the Autonomous Automobile X Prize. This is a cross-country cross race from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. in a fully autonomous car. The Apparel X Prize. This is basically looking at sustainable methods for producing clothing. We're also looking at completely different Apparel X Prizes, specifically examining the integration of sensors, embedding those sensors into the fabric of your clothing to, det to detect health metrics such as your vital signs. Also looking at the Neuro X Prize to develop a screening protocol to determine if a patient has or will have Alzheimer's. Earthquake Prediction X Prize to develop an algorithm to accurately determine and predict if future earthquakes are going to take place. And then my favorite, the Village Utility X Prize. My favorite because I'm, I'm designing it. What we're asking teams to do is to create a system or a technology that integrates and produces clean water, sanitation services, and energy for the developing world. So that's what comes next for XPRIZE. Let's talk about what comes next for you. As you can imagine, the solutions that result out of our XPRIZES can really impact your life. If you think about what the Archon Genomics XPRIZE and what the Qualcomm Tricorder XPRIZE how that can really empower you to take control of your own health. What the education prize can do for your education. Perhaps you're thinking about going back to school. Wouldn't you rather play a, a fun, compelling game rather than study out of a textbook? The autonomous auto X prize and what that can do in terms of your convenience on the road, especially here in the crowded, on the crowded freeways in Los Angeles, and what that can do for your safety as well. The apparel X prize, consider your Consider that your clothing becomes more of a fashion statement, but actually a testament to helping our environment. The Neuro X Prize and what that can do for your grandparents, your parents, and, and one day even you. The Earthquake Prediction X Prize and how that can help to solve lives, uh, help to save lives right here in Southern California. Beyond just the paradigm shifts that our X Prizes create throughout industries, I also want you to think about the paradigm shifts and the exponential changes that you can create in your own lives. If you think about attacking not just the surface of a problem, but the root cause of a problem, just like our X Prizes do, consider collaborating and working with individuals that you maybe haven't worked with before. Also think about developing not just one solution, but multiple solutions to a problem, just like our teams do. And think about what you, as one individual, can do to create positive incremental change, but how you, as part of a team effort or a crowdsourced movement, movement, can create exponential change. We have a favorite quote at XPRIZE that's near and dear to us by, Amer by uh, American anthropologist Margaret Mead. She said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. If you think about the Occupy protests and the Arab Spring, those didn't start with millions of leaders. It started with a few group, a, a few of thoughtful, committed citizens that were willing to take a risk. So go ahead and, and take a risk with your work. Become a pioneer. Consider starting a movement. In my three plus years at XPRIZE, I 
approach each day as an opportunity to learn or to, to actually look for exponential change, not just around me, but within me. I think about you know, waking up each day and not learning not just one new thing, but many new things that I can apply, not tomorrow, but today. And I invite you to do that in your lives and, and with your work, to think about the radical breakthroughs and the exponential changes that you can create around you, but also within you and how you perceive every day so that when someone asks you what comes next, you can answer anything and everything because you believe in creating radical breakthroughs, because you believe in, in inspiring paradigm shifts, because you believe in making the impossible possible. Thank you. <laughs>